what is model federation and how it can help us to build our micro front ends. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun FUSD. So on this channel, you will get to know about programming languages and videos like this. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. Today we'll discuss about model federation and how it's gonna help us to build our micro front end. If you remember our previous videos where we use angular elements to bundle the whole application and serve that as a single micro front end, that's a valid scenario. But in the demerit in that, you are shipping the whole application, not a functionality. And that's why the bundle size will be huge. But when we'll use module federation, our bundle size will be less. Bundle size means accessing the functionality of application is less. And by the way, this video is for all, not only to Angular, it's for all the application which builds through Webpack. So after Webpack 5, Module Federation is got introduced. So we'll go to the diagram and here we have a application edge A and an application B. In application A, it exposes a module as a micro front end, you can think. And in our application B, we are consuming the exposed module from our application A, rendering that in our application. So this is the just a basic thing of what model federation do. And both the applications are hosted in different server. For example, in your local, this is hosted in 3000 and this is hosted in 4200. This is, I'm just saying for local environment. So now you'll ask me, Subrat, how this is possible my application is hosted in differently and I can expose just a part of that. And that's where model federation comes in. So if you see, I have drawn some boxes. So think like these are the module of application A, but we are exposing only one module. So you can think like these are the local modules and the exposed module is a remote module. Now for the application A, when you build it, this three module, are act as a common module. Like suppose for example of Angular, when you're creating a module or a component, these are the normal component which is not exposed. But for this module, it acts as a remote module. Now this module will be load on the runtime of the application. So you are saying to your application that I am exposing this module, which can be act as a remote module. If you think this as a container, this container is exposed outside the application and now everyone can consume that in their application. In this scenario, we have exposed this module, suppose the module name is C, to a remote container and that container we are referring in our application B. In the application B, you will say Webpack that this module, here it will be C, which is pointing from our remote and you are saying that my module C is a remote module, so I will going to load it on the runtime. So you, you don't need to check that in the compile time. And you say Webpack that trust that this will going to work in runtime. And if something happens, I will going to handle that in runtime. Webpack says that, okay, you can expose your application from application A and you can consume that in application B. And that's how it's possible to expose a module and consume that in runtime. So for your application B, your module C is just like a route. So it just, you are saying that I will, when I'll go to this route, load this module. And to your webpack, you will say that this is a remote module and I will consume that in the runtime. So webpack will not going to throw you an error. And similarly for application A, you are saying that this is a module and I'm going to expose that so that all the application who wants to use it can use it. And that's how we can expose a part of our application as a micro front end, or you can create a list of modules and expose that as a micro front end. And all your application, all your means here, B can be act as a cell or base app, and it can use all your micro front end and render them to your user. And in the next video, we'll see how you can use NX with Angular to build our micro front end and how efficient it is and how small will be your bundle size of your micro front end. So please hit a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll not miss future videos. We're going to meet in the next video. Till that, stay happy. Bye-bye.